Well, here we are, the Parkes Radio Telescope. Today, one of the foremost instruments in the world for radio astronomy. It's a big dish, 64 meters in diameter, and it can turn and tilt to scan the entire sky. With it tipped over to the ground like it is now, we can step right aboard. Come with me and I'll show you how it works. Okay, Bob, take the telescope to the zenith. The radio waves from space, striking the surface of the big dish here, are reflected and focused to a spot directly over my head. There is the aerial cabin, where the sensitive receiving gear is placed. Well, here we are on the focal platform itself. Below us, there's nothing but the big dish itself. The radio waves are focused right to this platform. I'm looking onto the dish, and I know full well that the radio waves from distant galaxies, and quasars, and pulsars, are being focused right into my face. But I don't feel a thing. The reason is that these waves are extraordinarily weak. And that's what we need this receiver for. It's a very sensitive amplifier, which amplifies the signal about a million times. The signal passes through a hole, not the one I'm looking through, but a hole here in the center, and up through these pipes and into the receiver. From there, it's sent down cables to the radio room, which is in the tower supporting the dish itself below us. We're back on the ground again, just outside the supporting tower of the telescope. It has three levels, but we'll pick up our radio signal on the first floor. We're now on the first floor of the supporting tower of the telescope. And this room, which is often called the radio room, is filled with equipment to further amplify the weak signal that was sent down by the cable from the aerial cabin. The signal, which was already amplified by a million times in the aerial cabin, is increased in strength again a million times. And finally, a million, million times stronger than when it came from space into the telescope, it is ready to be sent to the control room above us for final recording and analysis. Now, in the control room, the signal generally is passed first to this machine. The purpose of this machine is to break the radio signal into its component parts, very much like a prism breaks white light into its colors. And this machine works with our digital computer. The digital computer finally presents the result as a graph. And here's the digital computer. 
and in front of it, the radio astronomer. These days, to be a radio astronomer often means that you have to be a computer operator as well. How's it going, Alan? Oh, we've got a possible detection on 273, but uh, I think we'll have to leave it for today. Mm. Uh, I think we'll go over to 2142. Frank, could we go to 2142 minus 75, please? Okay. And that was the astronomer telling our telescope driver to move the telescope to the next source in the sky that he wishes to observe. The observations of the heavens with the radio telescope continue night and day. And the information collected, appearing mostly as graphs, charts, tables, flows out continuously. But eventually, it is in the mind of the radio astronomer himself that the picture of the universe must form. The radio telescope serves only to extend the senses of man deeper into the heavens to find out how it works and what our place is in it. What do you reckon, Paul? I think we should do 0922 minus 51 with a 10 second integration time, Doc. Yes, but you have to reload the tape again. First. Yeah, okay. okay.